Hi everybody, Dr. Susan here, um, and today I just wanted to make a video about um, the 10 year journey I've been on. So, a lot of people know my story, I get that. A lot of people have heard me speak and heard my story, and if you know my story, then I guarantee you didn't hear the whole story in entirety, so you might want to listen and just hear. Um, I always ask that if people know anybody suffering to please share my videos. It's not about me. This is not about me, not my journey. It's kind of one that God led me on. And, you know, it's, it's to let people know that our bodies are amazing. God made our bodies amazing. I don't think people realize and they take it for granted. And I think they have to switch off their medical mindset for a minute and just look at the created body that God gave us. So I always use the example of if you cut yourself. So if you cut yourself and you're bleeding, um, what do you do? You run, you clean it up, put a band-aid on it, right? To protect it and to keep it from interference. So that's how the body works. If you remove interference, the body works perfectly and will work by design. Um, so the body has detox mechanisms in it. Um, it has mechanisms to create vitamins. If they can't be taken, they can be created in our bodies. Um, if we're lacking sugar, the body has ways to break down different biochemical configurations to make the sugar. So I'm not going to get into all that biochemistry and big words right now, but I just want to tell you, our bodies are absolutely amazing. It's what I believed. So going back 10 years, um, I always said prior to that, if ever I'm given the diagnosis, some life-changing diagnosis, I have to put my thought process to the test. So you have to think at this time, I was, I'm trying to, maybe my 30s, uh, but even in my 20s, or even my parents with testimony to when I was 16, 15, 16, I was reading Colbert Bailey's books on nutrition. So it's always been my love and passion to follow nutrition, um, always, always, sought after going back to school, um, actually starting school out a nutrition major, um, was kind of redirected to be an accounting major, a business major. Um, but the passion never left me. So I tried to redirect myself. I wasn't interested. So I was always reading my nutrition books on the side. And the funny thing is I was going to a different college than the one I attended on summertime courses because these colleges offer nutrition courses. So on summer break, instead of going to my college and getting the credits, I used to go to outside colleges to attend class to learn more about nutrition. So I've always had a love for the human body and that it'll heal itself. I was brought up in that model, not specifically like that, but um, my mom wasn't a big medicine person. So we weren't taking medicine for everything. My mom was giving us um, echinacea back in 1980 when no one heard of echinacea to boost our immune systems. Um, my family knows if you're feeling sick, you took elderberry. This goes back, again, 30 years ago. Um, my children, who the oldest now is 26, she knows if she's not feeling well, she goes to the refrigerator and takes elderberry. So they know, they know we've always lived in that model. We weren't big on over-the-counter drugs. We were definitely not big on prescription drugs. It's just not a model I ever followed. I think by design, I think God made me that way. I mean, I was following after the family model. I was you know, following growing up. Um, it always intrigued me, it always interests me. Um, however, I ended, up, um, I ended up in multiple jobs and, and degree paths along the way, a lot of it having to do with weight loss. Um, I owned a gym. Many people don't know that about me. So in my 20s, um, my husband and I owned two gyms in New York. Um, so I was a personal trainer and I was sorting after health in the body that way through exercise, through diet programs. Funny, I've always run the diet program. Um, I worked for Weight Watchers in the 1990s when it was owned by the Heinz Corporation. I was one of the first center managers um, in one of those roles. I was the youngest one. I was only 21 years old. Um, so just always sought after food and health and how you can heal the body. Always had that mindset, always, my entire life. Um, so fast forward now into my 30s. Um, I still had not gotten a nutrition degree and it was still on my heart and on my mind that I had to, had to do that. So I sent off to colleges and got books and you know had thoughts of doing it. Uh, but it just wasn't in my cards at the time. So like one child came, then the second, and then my third, 
and I was working and it was really just enough on my plate at the time to even think about school until um, 2008, honestly. Actually, I, I looked at it um, in 2003 when we moved to Georgia. So when we moved to Georgia, I heard about Life University and I was like, oh, I'm gonna apply there and I'm gonna get a nutrition degree. This is in 2003. Um, and I sent my application in and I was gonna go and I was all set and ready to go. Um, and this was, I think, in 2004 maybe. And um, it was the summer of 2004 and we were getting a lot of hurricanes come through at the time. Um, and I wasn't accustomed to that and living in Georgia now. I'm now living in Georgia from New York. I moved my whole family here, my immediate family, my entire extended family still lives in New York. We moved here. Um, I believe on God's calling. Um, and we were here and I fell down a flight of steps and I hurt my back severely. So I couldn't go to school. I had to just call the school and, and cancel if I wasn't coming. Um, so then a few months after that, once I could walk again and things like that, I wound up um, getting into chiropractic care. I decided to, um, to work, I needed to start working because I wasn't gonna go to school, so I needed to start a job. So I worked with um, uh, LA Weight Loss. I was like, the name's gonna escape me, but it's not. LA Weight Loss um, was just coming to Atlanta at the time. So I started working for them. When they heard my credentials, they immediately asked me to be a manager. I said I couldn't be because I have my kids and I had things I can't commit to that level of employment at the time. So I worked there for several months. Um, fast forward just slightly a bit, I ended up taking an office job that was more a nine to five rather than a real retail type schedule. LA we also was a retail, we were eight, you know, early in the morning till at night, weekends. Um, I didn't want to work that schedule anymore for my kids' sake. They were all in school. So I took a nine to five office manager job um, for about five years. The thing is, during that time, it was the most one of the most stressful times in my life. The job was very stressful. It did give me stability um, and did put me there for my kids. Um, it was very stressful. Um, and actually, I believe that's the time that the autoimmunity developed in my body um, during that time. So... Fast forward again, while I was in that job, I started to have really bad pain in my knees. Um, and my dad um, had been a candidate for a knee replacement since I think he was maybe 40. Um, my dad's now 80. He just got the knee replacements within the last 10 years, but he, he carried on in life through diet. Um, he went to the new center in New York um, and got into the care of a doctor there who gave him a, a diet to go on and he did so well, decreased the inflammation in his body that his knees were doing great for many years. So I'm still, I still always think about that because that's kinda what I did. Um, so they told me I needed a double knee replacement. I couldn't believe that. Um, so I, um, I just made it, I was too busy right now, I'll try to figure out a time. You need to commit like a, a long time at that time, almost like six months of your time. And I was working and had the kids and I was like, oh, I don't have time for this right now. What I didn't realize at that time, it all comes to light now. Um, I was diagnosed with MS in 2011. So I'm talking, this was like 2000, probably 2008 or so, is when they told me I need double knee replacement. What that was, was a symptom. I was having autoimmunity in my body that was attacking my knees. So my knees were swollen so bad, actually that they were so bad at that point, I would not wear shorts because actually my son was little at that time, um, maybe six, six or seven, and he used to cry when he saw my knees. It was so, it was so disfigured because the swelling was just enormous. So I always tell my patients now, specializing in autoimmunity, that if you're having debilitating joint pain, it's driven by inflammation in your body. So I always had the mindset of, of root cause, was never really wanted surgery. Didn't think I had a choice because they told me it was family history, also not true. I'm not gonna explain all this now, but that's what future videos are gonna be on this channel. It's gonna be the things that I did to unravel my health. So. Fast forward now to 2011. Um, well, actually I'll fast forward to 2008. Um, November 2008, my husband and I suddenly both lost our jobs. We happened to work for the same company. So that um, five year period that I said I was the office manager or general manager of this, it was like a construction company. 
Um, they just shut their doors in 2008 abruptly on a Friday. We were supposed to get our last paychecks that day or get paychecks that day and we were told you're not getting a paycheck. So we were thrown into financial turmoil immediately because not only do we not get a last paycheck, we didn't get the current paycheck um, and we were not knowing what we were going to do. Um, so it was a very life-changing moment for us. So I decided at that moment to my husband, I said, listen, I've worked hard at this company to reach the level I'm at. I can't start over. I just don't have the education to support it. I have to go back to school. That's our only choice. I have to go back to school. So he agreed and we were cut down to one income family, three kids. Um, it was, it was a struggle. We had a big house, um, that's now for sale, but we had a big house. It was, in, it was great when my kids were growing up. It's just to a point where it's not needed anymore. Um, but it was a big, big undertaking. So in January, 2009, um, that's when I started at Life University. So I enrolled right away. Um, as soon as I lost my job in 2008, um, I applied and was accepted as a nutrition major. So still following my dream of being a nutritionist. Um, and I was, I went to the, um, orientation class. Um, I don't remember the date. It was in January, 2009. And I'm sitting there listening to the, um, to the president of the school address all the future students. And he's talking about how amazing the body is and it heals itself. And if you remove interference, the body can heal itself. And I'm saying, what's this a thing? I've always believed that, but I didn't know it was a, a you know, a modality or the chiropractic philosophy. That's really what it is. Um, so I left that orientation that day and I told my husband, I'm not going to nutrition school. I'm not going to be a nutrition major. I'm going to apply to the chiropractic school, um, see if I get accepted in. So I applied, I got accepted in. Um, I had to go through 2009 for my prerequisites. You need prerequisites and a bachelor degree to get into chiropractic school. I had to finish up, um, a, I was in a business major, so I was lacking the basic sciences and things like that, physics, organic chemistry. I had to quickly get all those credits so I can be accepted and go into the chiropractic college. Um, and we started that, I guess it was 2010-ish. Um, so I was in my first year of chiropractic school, went through the entire first year, and in 2011, um, that's when I fell debilitated with MS. Um, so here I am in school. I kind of always knew, which always baffled people with me. I always said that I will get out of college and I will never, chiropractic college, chiropractic school, um, and I'm not gonna adjust one person. I wasn't about adjusting. Uh, but no one understood that when I said it, and I realized I didn't even understand it, so I didn't talk much about it. But I joined, um, I guess in February of 2000, uh, 2010, once I was in chiropractic school, um, upper cervical chiropractic is what made so much sense to me. Their philosophy, I absolutely love upper cervical chiropractic. I'm a big proponent of it. Um, I studied it for many years, and the plan was that I was going to graduate chiropractic school, and I was going to become an upper cervical chiropractor. Um, and open my own practice. And that was the plan. I thought, oh, this is it. I found it. So I thought I was very fortunate. This was like my second quarter in school, at chiropractic school, and people were trying to figure out and try everything, go to seminars and all these all these things happening. But it's like I found out in my second quarter, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew the practice I was gonna open. I knew the doctors I was gonna follow. I like had everything figured out. It was mind blowing. So um, went, kept going, right? So then April, 2011, I was at an upper cervical chiropractic seminar. So me and my friend, um, it was midterms week, so we were very stressed, a lot of exams. We finished them at Thursday at two o'clock. We hopped in the car at the school and her and I drove down to Orlando, Florida for an upper cervical um, seminar because I heard, I love research, so I heard that researchers or doctors from Italy were flying in to talk about MS research. Now I'll tell you, at the time, I don't even know what MS was. What I did know about MS is Montel Williams had MS. He was a talk show host in New York, so I was very familiar with him. I had friends who worked for his show, um, and I saw his video on how much upper cervical helped him, and I was just, I was amazed at, at, at the upper cervical chiropractic and the testimonies that were coming in, um, and also in BJ Palmer's book that I read, it's there's 5,000 case studies in there on how upper cervical chiropractic heals disease. So I was very taken by all this information and all this research and everything going on. It was just a great weekend. So all weekend I was feeling a little tired. 
I mostly chalked it up to it was a very busy week of um, exams and running around studying and packing and getting the kids situated for Orlando trip and driving you know eight hours down to Orlando after all that so went through the weekend like I said I was a little bit tired another thing I had noticed that weekend is I couldn't write very well my handwriting was not good um, and I did notice this one other time in my life and I remember vividly because here in Georgia we had these bad storms and a lot of flooding was going on and I had to write a note to my son's teacher and it wasn't even legible and I was like why am I writing like this like what is going on but you know as a mom and as a woman I just you know make an excuse I poof it off I blame it on the cycle or whatever it is or not exercising enough I'm not eating good enough whatever I'm too tired whatever excuses us moms make um, so I ignored it, but then it was happening again that weekend, still ignored it, but it was happening again, which was weird. I was also having trouble speaking and forming my words. I was, my speech was slurred. I noticed that too. Again, excuse, I'm tired. I don't know what's happening. Not going to pay attention, right? So just ignoring the whole thing. Keep marching forward. Um, so fast forward through the weekend, Sunday was Mother's Day. Um, I promised my kids and the girl I was with promised her three kids that we'd both be home for Mother's Day. So Saturday night when the seminar was over, it was like 8.30 at night, we hopped in my car, drove eight hours through the night back to Georgia to be home for Mother's Day for the kids. Um, I was exhausted that day, as you can imagine, because I was driving all night. So I, that's, we just chalked it up to that. I'm gonna go take a nap for a while. We'll go out to dinner later you know, happy Mother's Day, whatever kind of thing. Um, so at dinner, and my daughter, I think, still remembers that, she's looking at me, and she's asking me, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? And she said, because the right side of your face is not right. And I was like, no, I'm just tired. Um, I did notice it, but I didn't say anything. Again, I'm, I'm saying it's tiredness. Um, my sister, years before, had suffered from Bell's palsy in her face, so her face drooped. I didn't know if I was having from stress or whatever. I was experiencing that also. So I was like, I need a good night's sleep. Let's just go home. Next morning, Monday morning, I wake up. Can't feel the right side of my body. My eye is shut. My right eye is shut. My mouth is drooped. You can see something happened. It looked like I had a stroke. That's what it looked like. That's what it presented at for me. Couldn't move my right arm. I couldn't move my leg. I couldn't breathe well because my diaphragm, half of it was not working. So I called my husband and he had left for work already. And I said, I'm not gonna go to school today. You're not gonna believe this. I think I had a stroke. And he's like, what? He's like freaked out. So he's like, I'm calling an ambulance. I'm like, no, just come home. Just come home and let's just assess the situation and let's, uh, let's, let's go to the hospital. Um, you have to realize at that time, like in my first year of chiropractic school, like at that time, you know, people don't realize this about chiropractic students, but we were dissecting bodies and we were very much in diagnosis state and, and studying biochemistry and physiology and neurophys. Like that's the time where you have the heavy, heavy um, science study. Um, so it was very intense anatomy, of course. Um, there wasn't much chiropractic and adjusting like that. It was all of this other stuff. And my mind is, you know, reeling with all this information. So I just tell him, come home. If anything worse happens, I'll call an ambulance, but just you come home. So he came home, he looked at my face, looked at my body. He's like, oh my gosh. He's like, we're going to the hospital right now. He puts me in the car. We get to the hospital. They look at me. They're like, oh my gosh, you're going right in. So we go in immediately. They stick me right in a CAT scan to CAT scan my brain. Um, and within minutes, I, that's what it feels like. It was within minutes. My husband can verify if it's different. But it seemed like in no time I had, you know, they told me there's something on your CAT scan. There's something there. My husband asked the question right away, is it possibly it's an artifact or something false, that, a false impression? And they said, no, I'm sorry, it isn't because it goes through and through. So if you know what a CAT scan is, it takes sections of the brain. So when they say it goes through and through, it was going through all the sectioning of my brain and that, that whatever it was, that abnormality was going through and through. So they said, it's a stroke or um, she has MS. And I was like, what? Like, I just could not fathom it. So this is where I really want you to pay attention. I know it's a long video, but this is where you're gonna realize this is where everything I've gone through, and I don't talk about it very much. I certainly don't talk about this first 20 minutes of my life ever, I usually don't. I go right to my story, um, and it's a quick three minutes of how it all happened, and that's what most people have heard. They haven't heard all these details. Um, so I was admitted into the hospital, and I was admitted because they needed to give me a CAT scan. It was now at this time, we were there all day. Um, the neurologist came, he's like, I need an MRI with contrast. 
So you have to be admitted into the hospital. They admitted me, put me in the stroke ward. I had um, stroke um, physical therapists coming up and, and talking to me about planning on getting my movement back in my body and the things I needed. Um, it was just a mind blowing thing to me. We were shocked and stunned. Like I didn't think I was not gonna go home that night. So I'm in the hospital, I'm waiting for the MRI with contrast the next day. Um, they're also going to do a lumbar puncture, so they did do that. So lumbar puncture, uh, MRI with contrast, and a CAT scan um, were all done in the hospital within those four days that I was there. Um, so people ask me very often, are you sure you had MS? Are you sure you were tested properly? So I'm here to tell you, yes, I absolutely was. So they immediately saw multiple lesions on my brain that we call active. So it was actively happening. What they also saw were inactive lesions. So now this goes back, this wasn't the first time because that first time, if you remember I talked about where I couldn't write my son's note for school, my hand wasn't working right, that was a lesion in my brain that's now inactive. So the multiple times this happened kind of before they didn't pick up or recognize as a symptom I was ignoring and making excuses for, that was so important. So that's, that is what I want to drive home here. Many of you are suffering and you're not admitting it. You think that it's normal that your weight is increasing and you're not changing diet and exercise. That's what happens and that's what happened to me. So the picture I always show, I don't have it here now, um, but the picture I always show my before picture, and I have it if you want it, just call us or put a comment below, I'll post it. I was 40 pounds overweight, at least 40 pounds, maybe 60. Um, I ate well, I exercised, I took supplements, I was on the chiropractic care. The picture is of me hiking Stone Mountain because I thought I had cured my knees. So to me, that was a huge, amazing feat that I actually was able to hike Stone Mountain when before I couldn't even walk up one flight of stairs with my knees swollen to deformity. It was disgusting, you know what I mean? And I was helping myself with diet and with chiropractic care. Um, get that in check and the swelling went down and all that was working for me and didn't need new replacements anymore and I was super excited thought that was the victory I was done um, and again all the hopes and dreams came back in my head I'll tell you honestly people don't even notice about me I was an athlete um, in school in my 20s you know so my dream was always to run the New York City Marathon or you know weightlifting or bodybuilding I was a bodybuilder in my 20s these are things people don't know about me um, I owned a gym I was an athletic trainer like I had to give all that stuff up like to be on this new path um, and that's okay it's all it's all still in my heart and, and it could all happen someday I just don't know when but it will thankfully I'm busy right now helping other people reverse chronic illness I was I was put onto a new path by God and I'm very thankful for it um, but that's this is where it started so I wanted to tell you the story today because that was a problem I was diagnosed with MS they came in and told me you have MS um, sorry there's nothing you could do about it so what we're gonna do is we have some medicine. You'll have to be injected in your stomach every day. The bad part about that medicine is you are gonna feel like you have the flu every time you inject it. And I'm saying, what? I have three kids, I'm in school full time. Like nothing changed my thought of that my life wasn't gonna go on. So I always thought my life's gonna go on, but how am I gonna deal with that? Uh, I don't have time for that, right? So. I politely declined the medicine that they offered me. They, they gave me the first batch to go home with the need, the nurse would come and show me how to do the injections. Never did it, not one time. So just so you know, never went to a neurologist and I don't expect anyone to do this. I'm just saying, I personally sat in my hospital bed and I said, God, why are you doing this to me right now? I had my new career path set. I was so excited. I was gonna help so many people heal disease like why now why are you debilitating me right now um, but quickly I realized God put this on you because you have to take your attitude about the body that you know is a miracle and reverse this and then show people that our bodies are amazing and that they will heal themselves if you remove interference that's my whole premise that was my whole my whole motivation moving forward. So I'll tell you, it was difficult, very difficult. I used to be afraid to go to sleep at night because when I woke up in the morning, I thought I'd be blind, that I'd lose my eyesight. You know, I sometimes I couldn't breathe. They told me, they said, your left side of your diaphragm is paralyzed, but and if the right side tends to get paralyzed or happens to get paralyzed, you're not gonna be able to breathe and that's the thing that'll kill you. So I was always in threat that I could die at any moment. Um, that's very scary to deal with, but I, 
I would not accept it. No one could tell me different. I believed with every being in my heart I was going to reverse this, although they told me it's irreversible. You can't reverse it. And I said, yes, I can. Watch me. Um, didn't take the medicine. Um, quickly realized the chiropractic philosophy was if you remove interference, the body will heal itself. I believe that. So it was now time for me to what I've always believed my whole life, now was my time to put it to the test. So live or die, I'm gonna put it to the test. And that's what I told my family, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. Um, so they supported me and stood by me through it. Um, and it was tough, let me tell you, those days of debilitating pain, the pain I had was incredible, the pain that I went through. It felt like somebody broke my feet with a sledgehammer. It felt like somebody was sticking a sword through my thigh most of the time. It felt like my back was on fire. Somebody was putting a blowtorch on my back. I could not move my right hand well. My right eye was shut. And they told me that all these symptoms um, would are going to stay. I'm sorry. The damage is done. There's no reversing it. So there's nothing we could do. You could take the medication and we'll hope that will stop the progression of disease. I was like, no way. My bet's not on you. My bet's on me and my body. So that's, that's the thing here today. This is the biggest thing that I want you to have belief in your body. The body's amazing. It will heal itself if you remove interference. So now the thing is finding the interferences, right? Because I had to set out and well, how am I going to find these interferences? So I immediately in my hospital bed made an appointment with a new upper cervical chiropractor. I was under upper cervical care for a year. I still wound up with a diagnosis of MS. Something he's not doing is not right. I'm going to the upper cervical chiropractor that worked with these doctors in Italy. Um, there was one about an hour from my house. So I had to drive an hour each way, three times a week in the beginning. An hour each way, 55 miles was that chiropractor. But I had to go to him because he's the one who studied with the doctors in Italy who reversed MS, so I had to go to him, right? So, and then I worked with a doctor, functional doctor um, who also worked successfully with people with MS. And I figured with the two together, how could I fail? So I went to both as much time as it took, as hard as it was. Remember, at this time, I was debilitated. I couldn't move my right leg. A lot of times I couldn't drive. Someone had to drive me. I couldn't walk well. My balance, I had terrible vertigo. Like my head would be spinning. I couldn't stand up. I felt like my eyeballs were rolling inside my head. Um, the pain I was in, it was just incredible. The pain I went through. But I will tell you this, I tried so hard to, to hide all this pain from my children. And I didn't realize this until I did a podcast interview with Dr. Mindy Pels um, about my healing journey. And I'm gonna, we'll post that link so you can get it. But I, re I didn't realize how much I hid it. So I made my life that I had to, when I went back to school, just about a month or so later, two months later, I went back to school like this. And I would park my car and I wouldn't park close. So I wouldn't get a handicap sticker. I said, no, I'm parking with everybody else. And I'm gonna walk and drag this leg across the parking lot a mile to class. And if I'm a little bit late, I'm a little bit late. That's the way it's gonna be. But actually doing that by forcing my body, remembering those neurological pathways and not letting them close off was actually good for me. So I struggled and sweat and fought my way across those parking lots um, and my friends knew it you know and they knew when I was late they, they, they helped me so much I have a handful of friends and teachers that I owe everything to because without them I wouldn't have made it through chiropractic school so I'm eternally grateful to them helping me helping me get through that time um, so anyway as I started to unravel and find these interferences so I got regularly adjusted like I said three times a week um, and then I went to my functional doctor and he started doing multiple functional tests on me and that's why I fell in love with functional medicine what I also found out at that time is it was extraordinarily expensive and like, like I said we were on one income and I was a student I had three kids they were preteen years sports and they were very active and everything else so I wanted them to go forth with everything I didn't want to punish anybody for my sickness um, so they were always the, the, the carrot in front of my nose. I had to stay well for them and for my husband. I wasn't going to let them push me around in a wheelchair. So I'll tell you, that was my prognosis. I missed that part. Five years I'd be in a wheelchair, 10 years I'd most likely be dead. I would be dead in 10 years. That's this year. This year was my 10th year. I'm 50 years old. They told me I'd be dead. Think about that didn't have to be. So no one is saying anything's a quick fix or there's one pill or take this pill, you'll be healed or get a chiropractic adjustment, you'll be healed. That's not how it goes. So it's, it's, it's a different, a different thing that people have to realize. So I have notes here just so I don't forget because I tend to get on a tangent when it comes to my health. It's not one pill, it's not one diet. 
Um, and that's what I learned. And this is what I learned from Dr. Pompa and also Dr. Mindy, um, the multi-therapeutic approach. I didn't even realize I was doing that. So it was multi-layered and I often changed functional doctors because it kind of ran its course and I had to go to a new one and get their theory and then it ran its course and I had to learn them. All this time, and this has been happening for 10 years, I studied under them, I went to seminars, they were so gracious to me because I was a chiropractic student at the time or a chiropractor and they agreed to always help me and I'm so thankful because that's the toolbox I wound up with. I have an amazing toolbox and if I have to refer people out of my office, I refer them. If there's no place else that they can get what I have here, and let me tell you, most, I don't like to call myself a functional doctor anymore because they're using it all the time out there. That title is being used all the time. So you may have a chiropractor who didn't study day one about functional healing. He'll give somebody some supplements and call it functional, you know, functional medicine. That is not. And it's unfortunate, but they're bastardizing the functional medicine world because functional medicine is incredible. There are incredibly smart doctors out there who know about this toolbox and this multi-therapeutic approach, but you have to, you have to see one of them. Um, and that's the thing. So I get the question all the time, and you probably know I always talk about my functional blood chemistry analysis. It's how I recovered my health. I love blood because it comes out of my body and I want to know what's going on in my body. And for me to know what's going on in my body, I have to do this analysis so I can see what systems are in dysfunction. And if I can see that, I can correct those systems and be well. And you see today I'm well. My eye's not shut. I'm not in pain. I'm not debilitated. I can walk. I run. I hike. We do all that. We bike. So there's no debilitation. And to think for a minute, I'm supposed to be dead this year? Dead. I'm helping people now. It's not all over the country, but we've actually broken into at least three to four or five countries around the world. So we're helping people around the world, around this country, and almost every state in this country, help people get their life back and their health. And I think that's what God put me here to do. That's my purpose. Um, he gave me, I always said, you know, for years, um, for five years that I've been a doctor, um, God gave me my story in my mouth. That's what I have. So, but I do have something else. And I realized this a short time ago because somebody said something like, well, how does she know that? And I don't know it. I was like, how do I know that? Do you know that I studied for 10 years and all these things? And I studied with all these doctors across the country and naturopaths, medical doctors, functional doctors, chiropractors. I've studied nonstop for 10 years. I'm still studying. I just got a new book in the mail yesterday. I'm so excited about um, and it's about cancer and I just can't wait. I've read three or four cancer books already. I read the research. This is not, this is my life. This is my life. And that's the other different thing about me. This is my life. I live this. So anything I ask one of my patients to do, I have done or I do. I practice this as my health care. This is my health care. I don't have a medical doctor. I get an annual physical that I give myself. So I get my blood work done every year. There are certain tests I do periodically throughout year, functional hormone tests, things like that. And I'd love to talk to anybody about all of those. I know this video is going way too long. I just had to share all that with you because people get, um, they just think it's one pill or I'll just go to a functional doctor. If they have to give me the same, same, you know, same, uh, same outcomes you did. Sorry, I lost for a word for a moment, but they had have, you know, have the same result that you did. Cause I'm going to go to a functional doctor. It's the same thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm different than every functional doctor almost out there. There are a few more like me spread out around the country and I love them dearly. Work closely with all of them. So that's the thing. I'm in a network of doctors where in an instant I can turn to them if I'm not sure of something and ask the question or get a better opinion. We all kind of have a lane that we're in. We all have a specialty. Um, some is pediatrics. For me, it's autoimmune all day long. Um, reversing autoimmunity. To me, that's just like a cakewalk. To some people, it's not. It's a monster. Say a pill can reverse autoimmunity. No way. It's very complicated, but you can do it. That's the thing, the belief that it can be done. You have to believe. Um, and I always say that, and there are signs all over my office. I think I have one right here on my desk. So I always say you have to believe. You have to believe that anything is possible. It can be done. So I'm going to start spreading the word on this channel. Um, but know that it's not one pill. It's not one diet. That's the other thing. I'm going to talk about that, about diets. I'm going to talk about the functional blood chemistry analysis, what it does, why it's important, why you have to do it periodically. Um, things that people don't want to talk about. It's so important. It's the multi-therapeutic approach at getting your health back. It's incredible. And I got my health back and I'm so thankful. But in addition to that, if you look on my Facebook page today at Dr. Susan Manias, 
we have a testimony of we same thing. We got somebody's health back, told in the medical world, it's, it's impossible to do. There's no way you have to take these medications. It's not going to happen. And he came to me and he told me in the email, and I have the email where he said, I, did, I always give other people the credit because they do the work. It takes work. It's not easy. There's no pill. There are supplements, but then it takes work. Um, and I gave him the work. He did it. Um, and he reversed the illness. And I give him credit for that. And he's like, yeah, but you gave me the belief that it can be done. So for me, Dr. Pampa gave me the belief that it could be done because he reversed his health. And I watched after him for the whole 10 years that I've been doing this. And he gave me that belief, and I pass that belief on to my patients um, that it can be done. So I don't want anyone being a prisoner to their diagnosis. I don't care what the diagnosis doesn't matter to me. It does not matter to me. Um, there's always a way. There's always a way to prove the environment in your body. 100%. Our bodies are incredibly will adapt to the worst stressors for as long as it can. So once you take those interferences off, the body miraculously heals itself. So that's what I wanted to leave you with today. Um, I'm going to be talking more about this on this channel. I ask you please to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in more about how I did it. Not, not No more of the why. This is the why video. So if people want to ask my story, I'm going to turn them over to this video. This is the video of my why and my story. I'm including the first uh, 20 years or so that, that went on and ever since I was a teenager. I gave you all of it today and that's why this video is so long. But there are shorter versions around three minutes long. I just give you a quick synopsis of what happened. But if you want the whole story, this is the whole story. This is what my channel is going to be dedicated to, how amazing the body is, how it'll heal itself if you remove interference. And that's the core values we have here. And we have a mission statement. And it's, this stuff is plastered all over our office. We talk about it on Facebook page. We just have one belief here, and it's that the body's amazing and it can't heal itself. So I look forward um, to seeing you guys on this channel. Please, like I said, please subscribe. Please share this video. It's so important. Um, and as always, you can always look at my website. My story is there. That is also drsusanmanias.com. Facebook is at Dr. Susan Manias. It's always my name. Um, and you're welcome to call this office or Facebook us or message us because I'm always want to give a free consultation um, just to see if we can help you. And like I said, if we can't, we're happy to lead you in a direction that will can more help you. Um, we're just interested in helping people and getting that, the voice out there. All right, well, I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will see you real soon.